Hello everyone yet again. Welcome back to Axangel RC and to part 3 of the new CE Uni RC7 Pro HD radio system overview and introduction including the new Uni GCS Android app. At the end of part 2 I promise to show you something secret and cool that this system can do and I will just a tad bit later in the video let's see if I can get you to watch more than an average of 3 minutes. After the data link sub tab, the next down the line is the channels one, which you should already know all too well what to do in. Moving down the list we get to link status. In this tab you can see exactly what the name suggests. A lot of information about the system's wireless link including separate lines for data and image upload and download rates. And this is interesting because the HM30 system, as far as I have been told, assuming I have understood correctly what I have been told via a questionable translation from Chinese in the chat carries the data in the image stream. So with that system you could see a total of all the data going up and down. With this system you can see it separated. So that leads me to believe that perhaps it is now using two separate streams which would be curious and would suggest that indeed this is a brand new system with brand new hardware. But anyway, you get the idea of what information you can glean from this tab and it does show signal strength and quality which are useful indicators especially for an HD system. But I would have preferred that information be available in the main camera view area of the app not buried in here and I've already told C about that so hopefully they will implement it in a future update. Next sub tab is buttons and dials and this is an interesting one because in here you can set the behavior of all the single press buttons. The one set to reset would be 100% while you are holding them and would go back to zero when you release. They act like momentary switches. And I set the gimbal's autofocus to R1 because that is exactly the type of switch behavior that function needs. If you set them to lock they will hold 100% until you press them again, so we'll act like two position switches. There is a third option, a three stage switch, but in this one they act the same as lock, since they are essentially two position switches at most and even that is achieved through programming, not physical ability. Next one down is receiver settings and this deals with the air unit's PWM output port. Yes, the air unit has the ability to output five good old PWM channels and from this tab I assume you can choose which channels out of the SBUS stream get output to which pins on the PWM port which can be pretty useful in certain situations. Next down the line is the failsafe sub tab. In here I did not touch anything since the factory behavior of the system upon loss of signal with the ground triggers a failsafe event which in turn triggers return to land in my ArduPilot flight controller in the MFE Hero. And guess what? That's without any failsafe or return to land specific settings needing to be set in the autopilot by the user. All works from factory without issues or hiccups. Yes, I'm looking at you INAV. Moving on we get to the next sub tab, which is system. In here, in addition to being able to reassign the flight group of buttons to any channel you want, you can select a different air unit if you have more than one bound to this radio. So yeah, you can have multiple air units bound to this one radio and from the top option you can switch between them along with all channel and button relevant settings for different models. This is almost starting to look and feel like a regular RC radio. Only thing that's missing is dual rates and expo curves. You can also set a number of other things in here but for the most part other than the flight and receiver selection chances are you won't need to touch anything else or if you need to it should be well explained in the user manual which as of January the 5th 2025 is available for download from C's website. Next one is the image transmission settings and in here you can choose the transmission mode and this would be the equivalent of the 8km or 24km or 40km modes in the HM30 system, although not so clearly labeled I'm afraid. C claimed that the standard mode is the one to use for most range. I did try the other modes. Keep in mind that when you change mode the receiver and radio will lose the link, OSD and video will freeze but don't panic. 
Just wait. It will come back. Just take some time. So do not do this while flying. Next line down is, I assume, the bitrate of the downlink, but changing it to 20 only bumps up the actual megabits per second value in the link status tab from around 8 to around 12. So it does something, but it doesn't double it, and it's not even close to 20. I'm not sure what the bitrate modes do exactly, but switching to bitrate priority makes no noticeable changes to the latency or the image data rate, but does not really show adequate wireless channel signals strength or image quality indicators, which is weird. Something is buggy with this mode, I guess, so I have to report it to CE. Changing the data rate to 20 megabits per second makes it act exactly like the standard mode. The bitrate enhancement mode did make a change. It bumped up the image data rate a lot, pretty much doubled it in both 10 and 20 megabits per second modes, and I feel like it increased the latency. At least it looked like so to me. In any case, seems like the standard mode in 10 megabits megabits per second is the one to go for for the time being so I'm sticking with it. I tried various things but this is about the delay that you get. I did not find an option that would make it less and I did not find an option that would make it more. Below that you can pick and choose which frequency you want to use and that option is available only for the pro version and below that you can choose to disable the frequency hopping although I have no idea why you would want that. I'm keeping mine on. And so the last subtype is device info. And in here, you would see information about the radio and the air unit's firmware versions. This is what you need to screenshot or take a photo of and send to CE every time you have a support question. This is the first thing they will ask for, so make a note of it. And before you contact them, take a photo of this and send it along with your questions. The last main tab with the cogwheel shows the app version and a QR code to what I assume is C's Facebook page. Top right, where it says map type, you can select which service provider to supply the map you can load on the main view screen. For outside of China, you should select Google from the drop-down menu, although that currently does not work in the version of the app I have on my device, but C are promising that it will be fixed very soon. I get an error message when I open the map that play services are not available, hence no map. I hope it will get fixed as I found it fun to play with in the CFPV app. Seemed to work well there but I have to say that this app is still in its infancy so it is normal for some stuff not to be working out or be ironed out out of the gate but hopefully very soon. Now, as I was playing with the system for these videos, C did release a new version of the Uni GCS app, which supposedly had the map issues fixed, but they were not fixed. Still had the same error message, but they did add some other stuff, like an auto land button on the main screen, so you see how this is more geared towards copters already. They also added this button under the camera controls. It enables saving the video stream to the radio's memory. When you click it, it will make a file and save the video stream without any OSD overlay on it. Click it again and you stop the recording. This is separate from the screen capture feature of this radio. For the cameras slash gimbals, they also added the option to enable grid lines on the screen, which would be convenient for framing. And they also added the option to browse the SD card in the gimbal. And even though you can't play back videos, you can at least delete them remotely without the need to format the whole card to free up space. Also, for the static R1M camera, they have added the option to flip the image to this version of the app, but funnily enough, it only flips it vertically, but not also horizontally. So you end up with the image basically reversed left to right. As you can see, the text on the boxes is in reverse. See, are aware of this issue and it will be fixed in the next version of the app. They also added an extra tab shaped like a copter in the apps menu which I feel like is a straight ripoff of QGround control style. It gives you access to some of ArduPilot's settings for initial setup and calibration so actually you may not need to have it connected to a computer to do that, would be able to do it through here. Pretty much every calibration you would need to do is available here including the full parameter list, again in QGround control style which I hate but I guess 
it is better than nothing because the CFPV app did not offer this functionality. And having it, especially if you know the names of the parameters you need to adjust so you can search for them, is a very welcome addition. Basically with this app, they have combined the CFPV app and the CTX app from the MK series and now they are merging in some of the QGround control functionality which at the end of the day is good, gives you more control over your drone. I like that. They did also introduce some login screen for some C account but you can skip it, it is not required. And yeah, now when you connect you do have to wait for the parameters to load before you can make use of the app. And now for what you all have been waiting for and watching, the secret, even though I would assume this is explained in the user manual, so not much of a secret, but still. Here we go. Using the LAN cable from the radio to the computer does give you a network, but you can't connect to the drone via the Uni GCS or Mission Planner. However, if you create a hotspot from the Uni RC7 radio and connect to that from the laptop, you can connect via the Uni GCS, but for some reason it refused to load the video feed from the gimbal. I was only able to get the video feed from the R1M camera. Also, the telemetry was pretty choppy since now it is splitting the feed between the two devices and with this new app on the radio, it keeps going in into parameter loading mode constantly because it's losing the connection for the telemetry constantly. It was pretty much the same with Mission Planner as well. The parameters would load very slowly on it and the radio app would go into param loading all the time, which also made the telemetry very choppy. Only thing that was able to load up normally in Mission Planner was the video feed from the gimbal and at least that works well and there is no delay in the video feed between the two devices and there does not seem to be any increase in the stream's latency either. Now get this, I connect an HDMI cable to the radio, all this info and video is showing up on a third screen now, although that is basically a mirror of the radio screen, not a clean video feed, but still, everything is working and not lagging, or at least not lagging in the workshop under optimal range conditions, i.e. 2 meters from air module to radio. Remains to be seen if it will be that seamless once the plane is in the air. If I stop Mission Planner, the telemetry update rate goes back to normal on the radio and if I stop the Uni GCS app in the radio, the telemetry rate goes to normal in Mission Planner. So basically the radio acts as a relay station, although limited by its hotspot range ability. Only drawback to Mission Planner is that you can't use the mouse to control the gimbal. You would have to do it on the radio from hardware controls. Or you can use the Uni GCS on the computer if it's more convenient for gimbal control than tapping on the radio screen and still use the radio to control the plane. Of course, in order for the telemetry data to work properly on the Uni GCS on the computer, you will have to shut down the app on the remote, but video and data would be uninterrupted to the computer via the hotspot. This is definitely something that I never was able to get working with the MK15 or MK32 radios and even though something like this is possible with the HM30 system, if using Wi-Fi it would get scolding hot and would randomly disconnect for no good reason, so you would have to use a LAN cable. And the cable worked there and greatly improved the video's frame rate, although my recent tests showed that the Windows version of the Uni GCS works pretty decent with the HM30 system. But so far the Uni RC seems to be the more advanced and ironed out of the two, at least in terms of hardware and functionalities like these. What can I say? I am impressed. To a degree, the Windows program and the Android app still need some work, but they are much better than the CFPV app was when it first came out. And the hardware seems to definitely be a lot more capable than the HM30 system, at least at close range. Remains to be seen how it will do in the real world on a hot summer day in the air when the kilometers start piling on. And since the system is already on the MFE Hero and set up with the autopilot, that is what I will be doing next chance. I get to fly, so stay tuned. And I just want to add one more bit. I am thoroughly impressed by the CE GPS module, the one that came with the N7 autopilot. I am inside a reinforced concrete building, mid-floor, other buildings nearby, I have never had a GPS lock even one satellite sitting on my workshop table. Yet this thing managed to get up to 12 at some point, somehow, while I was playing with the system. Absolutely amazing. Well done, CE. Or more like, 
Well done whoever made the chip and the antenna and well done C for using that exact combo. Now then, relevant links are in the video description below and if you have enjoyed this series don't forget to like, share, subscribe and notify so you never miss a new video. A huge thank you to all my Patreon supporters and anyone who has supported this channel. Fly safe and I will see you again soon.